ladies and gentlemen, PFAS is found in cosmetics and personal care items. Now, I did a video a couple of months ago when they found it in virtually all toilet paper that's sold in America. And also this morning, I was looking at a few more articles and one came out from Canada saying that it's in the blood. When they are doing blood work on people, they're finding PFAS in their blood. So if that's the case, it would have to be in the blood here in America as well. I don't see how it couldn't be, especially now that this stuff is everywhere. It's virtually everywhere. So beauty, dark secret, toxic chemicals in cosmetics and personal care products. Forever chemicals are PFAS. Found in cosmetics and personal care pose environmental and health concerns due to their persistent and accumulation in bodies and ecosystems. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is going to be an ongoing thing as we move along into the future. They're going to still find this stuff everywhere. And you know, people are more than likely congesting it. How do you avoid it being that it's so much of it in the water and in, in the food? It's, it's everywhere. So cosmetic and personal care products enhance the way we look and feel during the pandemic. You know, uh, people had to take care of themselves. You know, with any kind of personal items, it's not like you could go places. The only way you could get your cosmetics and personal care items was online. Not unless, uh, you know, stores and their restrictions and a lot of places were closed during the pandemic and you really could not access it that way. So... Many of these products can uh, contain chemicals called PFAS. Known as forever chemicals, they are used in ingredients that make products waterproof, long lasting, and help them spread smoothly across the skin. European data indicates there are about 170 PFAS ingredients for use in cosmetics and personal care products. Each year, upward of 80,000 kilograms of PFAS may be released after product use to water waste and solid waste streams. Mm -hmm. PFAS are persistent environmental contaminants the properties that make them commercially useful, particularly the stability also means that there is no environmental mechanism to degrade them. And so they just keep accumulating. PFAS has been found across the globe, including remote regions like the Arctic. Wow, it's up in the Arctic. No, it just tells me the people that are running the world are terrible at really running things. You know, it, it seems like you're so focused on yourself being in charge and giving yourself pats on the back that you let everything else fall through the cracks. So, PFOS also accumulates in the body. And, you know, this also goes into blood samples that they have found from thousands of people in Canada and their blood contains PFAS. In fact, they said all of the participants that they drew blood from, they all had it. There was not one person that was free from having PFAS in their bloodstream not one person. And I really believe that's the case here in America. You know, anything that can't be fixed, 
these folks have a tendency of not talking about anything they can't resolve. So it just kind of gets pushed in the background and we never hear about these things. So major sources of PFAS exposure to people are through diet and drinking contaminated water or ingesting food such as meat and fish, agriculture, even in the fruits and vegetables, y'all, in the plants, they are finding it there. So you may say, well, I'm a vegan or I'm a vegetarian. It's still in all of the, the vegetation and, and fruit that's out here. So even if you don't eat meat, chances are you still got this in your bloodstream. And they said it's in the environment. So one study, we measured the PFAS in cosmetics and personal care products purchased in Canada. So what did they look at? They looked at bronzers, concealers, foundations, shaving cream, sunscreens, and moisturizers. And PFAS was extracted from each and every one of these products. And these are things that are commonly used. Mm -mm -mm. So PFAS presented in the products at a high milligram amount or down to a trillion of a gram, but it was there in all of these products. And Canadians use a lot of the same things that are used here in America. Okay. So a new proposed Canadian PFAS regulation will set a threshold level of one microgram per gram in products, which means that PFAS at or below this level will be uh, an incidental and prohibit, they're going to try to prohibit products that got a certain amount of PFAS in it. That's really what they're saying. Um, and they really should be doing things like that here in America, but you know, America. So yet we found some products that contain PFAS included in prohibited use. So they said even when they're prohibiting products, they're still finding it anyway <laughs> in products that were not prohibited, but they're still at that same level. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be a whole new way to manage the industry of personal care products and cosmetics. Right? So this is still pretty new. So high levels of PFAS. One study in the United States noted higher blood levels of PFAS in women that typically wore foundation. A study from Korea linked applications of cosmetics and personal care products higher in levels of breast milk. Another illustrated this trend more directly. So they said it's in the sunscreen and they're noticing people that use sunscreen also have levels of this in their blood. So uh, within three weeks of using sunscreen, they said they tested a group and they had 10% the amount total of PFAS in their body. So that means these folks that are applying sunscreen all the time, they got an increase level of it, and they are the ones that will experience the accumulation effects of it going into their bodies. So this suggests that daily applications of sunscreen during the summer months and frequent applications of other PFAS containing cosmetics and personal care products would result in high blood levels of it. Wow. 
So unlike other chemicals, PFAS is persistent. This means that a human exposure to even low amounts of PFAS can accumulate over time. And half-life, they said this could take around two years off of your life. Two years of it accumulating. Two years. So it could actually ultimately be more than that especially as the years roll by and you're still using all of this stuff. I mean, how do you get away from it? You really can't. It's everywhere. It's in the water when you're shut. <laughs> you know, ugh, ah, this, this is ridiculous. So other regions are taking even broader approaches. The European Union has banned, uh, would be eliminate uh, thousands of PFAS products and California is planning to effectively eliminate any PFAS ingredient used in cosmetics and apparel by 2025. Canada should consider a similar approach as a solution to protect people from exposure to these chemicals when applying cosmetics and personal care products and eliminate their transfer to the environment after use. Now, y'all, you know what I think? I think people ultimately are going to get sick. I, you know, I, I think it's just like anything else. Some people will feel the effects more than others. And when it happens, I think the U.S. is one of these places that would stay silent or make you believe it's not from that. It's something else, you know, because those are the games they usually play up in here. And it does more harm than good. So y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. This is a disgrace for something like this to even happen in the first place. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace family.